Hi, it's Brian here from Niche Advice. In this video, we're going to talk about frequently asked questions, but not your normal frequently asked questions, not the corporate sort of jargon. I'm going to tell you uh, about all the questions that I get almost on a daily basis. Some of them are really helpful, useful questions uh, and answers. Some of them are frankly really annoying questions that I get sometimes, but I'm going to bring it all out for you. I'm going to put it into a uh, detailed sort of list within the YouTube uh, subject line so you can actually skip to them. If you did like it, obviously leave a comment. Hi everybody, it's Payam here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. Right, in this session I thought I'll talk about some of the most common questions I get asked as a mortgage broker. Um, now, these could be starting from, you know, what do you charge to right the way through some more complicated uh, questions, but they're actually quite common. So people think, uh, oh right, this is really uh, unusual, but I get asked them on a daily basis. So let's start with it. How much do you charge? Um, it's quite interesting actually. I had, a, I had a lady who was on a very big salary. We're talking three, four hundred thousand pound salary. Okay, looking to buy a property well over a million pounds. Okay, and before she even introduced herself, she sort of said, "How much do you charge?" And I don't like the way. I mean, our charging structures on the website um, and in and all the, in all the quotes, um, but that's not a way you start a conversation. So. Um, but to answer the question is, if it's a standard mortgage, and hers, in her case, it was, we charge £499, including VAT, so that's inclusive of VAT, but only payable until completion of the mortgage. That's really important because a lot of brokers have got different charging structures. Don't, some don't charge at all, okay? Uh, others will charge an administration fee, maybe £299 or £300 up front, and then they will add on maybe half a percent of the loan at the back. So um, there are lots of different charging structures out there. My own personal belief is if we don't deliver for the client, and that's not, you know, some, some brokers, what they will do is they will charge, um, you know, and they will say, uh, yeah, once we get your mortgage offer, you owe us the money. But you can get your mortgage offer and you can lose the deal. You know, in, in, in theory, the property could fall through. Um, there could be a problem with a survey. Um, but obviously your own survey, maybe a home buyer survey, and you decide not to proceed with it. So my theory is, look, if we've done the work for you, you've bought your house or you've refinanced it, that's when it's payable. And I think that's a fair way of doing it. But it's always worth, I mean, don't get me wrong, you should always ask uh, what, what people are charging structures. Us obviously have a look through their website. They should have it on their websites. Um, some do, some don't. We certainly do. It's on a... Uh, it's on our first home page as well as about us charging structure um, there are other charging structures out there so what I've decided to do so in terms of standard stuff it's anything which is really standard it's 499 pounds and that's for and very unusually that's for secured loans as well now until a, about a month ago we used to charge three and a half percent of the loan amount for secure loans because you could get a secure loan for 20 20k uh, and you know it's it's a lot of work. So, but what we decided to do is say, look, you know, let's be transparent as much as we can for bridging finance, where we used to charge one percent, and a lot of people do still one percent of the loan for bridging finance, secured loan, and mortgages, which is charged four hundred and ninety nine pounds, including that, not payable until it's all done. And um, there are more uh, complicated cases where we can charge half a percent of the loan or even 1% of the loan, mainly if they've got a lot of adverse or it's something unusual to the case. Now, don't get me wrong, I mean, niche advice is unusual. You know, we do a lot of unusual stuff, but a lot of the stuff that I do is treated as, you know, um, as standard, 499 pounds. So I hope that clarifies it um, for a lot of people because every, I get a lot of questions on that. They're expecting me, because we're specialist brokers, they're expecting me to charge thousands and thousands of pounds. I'm not, I'm not in it because we get a lot of inquiries. I'm not, basically, I can't, I can't live with myself if I start, you know, and I, and I heard, you know, I've heard brokers charging for standard mortgages like £3,000. I just can't justify it. And I'm not sure how they're justifying, certainly to the regulator. So that's that. In terms of documentation, so the next thing I get is, look, I tell me exactly how much I can borrow, but I don't want to supply any documents. Well, I can't do it. If that's what you're looking for, I'll tell you what you do. 
open up Google, type in mortgage broker and go somewhere else because I can't do it. Uh, it's not, it's not, I'm not giving you good advice. I'm just giving you something wishy-washy just to pull the business in. And unfortunately, that's what happens. A lot of brokers out there, what they will do, or some brokers, not a lot, uh, uh, what they will do is just to get the application in, just to get you hooked in. They go, oh yeah, you can borrow this. And then when it comes in, oh, you didn't know, you, you didn't tell me about this loan you had. Oh, you didn't tell me about four kids that you've got. Oh, you didn't tell me about this, uh, you know, default that's on your file. You didn't tell me about, oh, um, there's a second home behind the scenes. Oh, you didn't tell me that your partner's not working. So, oh, you didn't tell me that, you know, uh, you've gone over your overdraft limit in the last month. All of those things are based on documentation. You didn't tell me about your gym membership. You didn't tell me about your pension contributions. You didn't tell me about your, maybe it's a good point, maybe around, um, you know, a, a, a London rating that you get. So all of those things are really once you have a conversation and you get people's documents in because I can see it on the payslip. You didn't tell me about that child. How comes you've got child benefit coming in on your bank statements? So don't ask me. Don't, don't. It's just, just the worst. It's the bad hate I get where people are just not willing to give us the documentation that we need to do a job for them. Remember, I don't get paid until the deal goes through. So it's in my interest to make it happen. However, if you're not willing to meet me halfway, Again, Google, mortgage broker, somewhere else, please. Um, the, the, next, uh, the next thing that I get asked quite a lot is, um, how quickly can you do this? Okay, now in normal terms, not COVID terms, generally my answer to the clients is, um, how quickly can you get your documents across to me? Okay, and that's really, the bit that takes the longest for doing an application generally is the client us giving the client the quote and the list that we need and the client giving us what we wanted now i'll give you a perfect example we could speak to a client on their fact find on their information sheets and everything it says their salary is i don't know 50k can i have your tax returns please because they're self-employed oh i haven't filed them yet well you need to file them i can't use what you said oh can you not just get a can i come you know can not my accountant give you a letter no, I need, I need you to file those figures. Um, so we have to wait for the accountant to file the figures and bits and pieces or proof of ID, proof of address. Oh, um, uh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't changed my driving license, you know, details. Well, you've been in your house for four years. Yeah, yeah, yeah I just thought, you know, just leave it at mum and dad's. Well, I need two forms of ID, okay? Two forms of, sorry, address, uh, proof of ID, proof of address, generally two forms of address. So can you get that across to me? Oh yeah, you'll have to wait, I'll have to get this changed. So a lot of that stuff takes time, normal terms. At the moment, lenders, oh my God. Um, so, you know, you have got an idea. Now, if it's, we will have that discussion, if it's an urgent case, which everybody says it's urgent, but if it's a really urgent case, we may have to go with not the best lender out there, maybe third down or fifth down or 10th down, depending on how urgent it is in terms of you know, you're going to lose the property. Okay. Um, also, we've got expertise to find out, okay, if we go with X lender, normally the worry is, right? Oh, let's go to the next question is, how quickly can he instruct valuation? Not me. How quickly can the lender instruct valuation? So that's really dependent on lenders. And I'll tell you how that works. Some lenders um, will instruct valuation straight away when we press the button and go to application. Okay. Other lenders what they do is they assess the case, they underwrite the case, they may come back to us with questions or what's this on the payslip, what's that on the bank statement, and then only when they're satisfied, they will instruct the survey, all right? Um, so that makes a big difference. So I'll give you an example. If you go with, it's a bad example, but I'll tell you why. If you go with Santander, okay? Santander will instruct the valuation very quickly usually with you know by when you when you apply however if you go with let's say another lender like metro for example they will underwrite the case okay and then instruct it now the difference between that could be a week and a half two weeks sometimes okay so it's important we understand where we are with this and it's important the estate agents understand who the lenders are 
you know, there's a big difference between the two, okay? Now, just because, now, the estate agent's perspective, you're getting absolutely hammered by the agents to say, um, when's the when's the survey being booked? Because they see that as a commitment. They see that as, right, survey's being booked, that means the application's gone in, that means the client has committed, okay? But it also can mean it's a false sense of security because they may think, survey's been booked, everything's done. The case has been underwritten. You may think, oh, right, but the survey's booked. You know, I get, often I get cases that have been declined, but my survey got booked. Well, yeah, they didn't even look at your case. That got booked because somebody pressed a button on an application form. No one looked at your case, okay? So it's important uh, we understand that. Let's go through the next one. My last broker didn't ask for any of this. Why are you asking for this information? Because I don't want to be your last broker, okay? Um, we tend to ask for more information than other brokers. Um, so, if, and that's because I like to get and assess the case before it goes to the lender. If you want a form filler, we're not that business for you. Because what I want to do is I want to try to double check everything, make sure it's all right, make sure we don't waste our time. Uh, the amount of cases I get because brokers haven't done, I got, I got two yesterday, okay, I'll give you an example. One, the client uh, was recommended to go to uh, Metro and he was on a visa and wanted to get 90% loan to value. Well, can't do it because they want a certain amount of loan to values on foreign nationals and they want to do 10%. Got declined, okay. Another one, another inquiry I had, I don't know where, where they are with it. Uh, client wanted to um, get a, I think it was a buy to let remortgage on a studio flat under 30 square meters. Went to a lender, they don't do it, it's in their policy. So it's literally, you just go on their policy, their lending criteria and you read it. Uh, as a broker, the broker should have done their job. Didn't do it, waste of time, three weeks later, underwriting, valuations, all of that. It's in their policy. So, you know, that just gives you an example of, well, my, my, my last broker didn't do it. Well, there's a reason where they're your last broker and they're not your current broker. So please try to sort of work with us here. Uh, next bits and pieces is, um, if I give you a, um, if, I, if I give you this documentation now, um, do you really need it? What do you mean? Well, if, if I give it to you now, do you really need it to use it now? So, well, of course I do, yeah. We, we need it to send it to the lender and the lender needs to process it and bits and pieces. Um, another one. Do I have to... Oh, yeah. I notice that... Have you got any children? Uh, well, do you have any children or not? That's a very straightforward... Have you got any children? Um, yes, but do I have to disclose them? Well, firstly, that's fraud. Secondly, I think you should disclose your children because it has an impact on your affordability and bits and pieces. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised, guys, um, the amount of questions I get. Right, next one. I haven't found my accounts yet, um, but I want, a new, I want to find out how much I can file, uh, how much I may be able to afford. Okay, fine. Um, I can give you an indication. How much do you think you will find? I, I don't know. How are you expecting me to tell you what you can afford if you don't know what your earnings are or what they're at least going to be? Because I can generally give you an idea, you know, around four and a half times incomes there. If you're earning more, there may be lenders that will go five times income. It also has got to do with loan to value and so forth. I have actually, guys, the video, quite a comprehensive video on maximum mortgage affordability, how to get the maximum mortgage. I will put it there. There, there's a link. Um, go and click on it. Go and read about it. Hopefully that will help you. Um, the next batch of questions is, we sent a quote, say four months before. We spoke to the client four months before, sent all the documentation off, given them a list. I said, look, here's the quote. I know you might not be ready now. Get the documents to me. At least start looking through the documents and start collating them and gathering and stuff. So have you noticed, guys, lots of it to do with documentation, isn't it? Lots of these questions are documented. Come back four months later, well, give me a form, and that's it. 
So where's all the other stuff? Well, I didn't know I needed other stuff. Well, we discussed it. Remember, I give, oh, right, 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 right. Uh, can you just put it through without the dog? No, the bank's going to ask for this stuff. I need to double check it. Um, oh, 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 okay, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go and find out. Next bit um, is we get is solicitors. My solicitors are taking too long. Can you give them a call? Um, okay, so we can try to chase them up. Or, more importantly, my offer, my solicitors are saying they're not getting any response out of the lender. Now, what happens when solicitors deal with the lenders is the solicitors deal with the lenders specific departments. Okay, um, so they're supposed to, as part of their job, they're supposed to liaise with the lenders completion departments to get the case completed. Sometimes the solicitors can't be bothered or the lenders are actually not replying to them. But really at that stage, the mortgage offer has been done. So we've done our bit in terms of trying to get your mortgage. But the solicitors can't be bothered to make a call or the lenders are not responding. What happens is because we're not on a time clock, because remember I charge on a one-off basis, the solicitors try to push that out to us. And of course, you put you in a bit of a panic and you as clients will try to get us to do it. I don't mind doing that, especially if I've recommended the solicitor or it's something I can do. But I get quite a lot of that um, as, as queries or what's happening with the value. At the moment, the biggest gripes that we get, the biggest question, uh, issues we get is valuation is not booked. Can you chase the lender? My mortgage offer has not been issued yet, but you told me the mortgage offer has been issued. Can you chase the lender? So it's generally chasing other people for other things, um, which basically are out of our control. Because if a lender says, oh great, your mortgage offer has been issued, but you know, we've got a backlog. There's nothing I can generally do. I can phone them up and say, look guys, can we give, but they've got thousands right now. So anyway, a uh, bit of a, bit of a frustra frustrating one. Um, in terms of, uh, complications in terms of credit report another one um, I've got bad credit but I'm not sure what it is can you get me a mortgage mm. well first thing you want to do is I will you want to go and get a credit report I've done another video all about credit reports and bits and pieces and again I will put it 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 again um, yeah go and check that out I think the first thing you need to do if you think you've got credit report bad credit report is, um, oh, sorry, bad credit, is go and pull a multi-agency credit report. This will demonstrate exactly to you what the issues are. If there's a default, if there's a mispayment, and if there's a joint application, guys, if you're 100% sure, just go and get another credit report for the other person as well. Do it together so you know where you stand. The last thing you want to do is get a decision in principle and get declined, especially with a hard footprint in there, because we were another clue. Um, and then, and then what would happen is you'll get declined. And then, oh my God, we have to, you know, give me your credit report. We have to try to find out. Oh my God, uh, we can't do that 85% loan to value because the bad credit lender will only accept 20% deposit. And it gets messy. The only thing you could have done is right at the beginning, get your credit report so we know where we stand. Okay, so click on that video. Um, it, it, it should help you. Um, and yeah, find out first because different all the, it's not the end of the world if you've had problems okay that's not the end of the world but it affects potentially rate and it affects the, the amount of deposit you need to have as well as affordability okay so I'll give you an example if you didn't have any credit issues you could potentially get five times your income okay with some lenders generally if you've had credit issues it's going to be lower. It might be around four and a half times. Again, it's to do with your income profile because if you've got high income, there are some lenders that will accept a bit of adverse credit, but will be able to give you, you know, around the five times income. So it just depends how bad is bad. Next, uh, property types. Uh, I live in this property. Um, how much do you think it's worth? I don't know. Have you checked Zoopla? Have you checked Rightmove? Have you spoken to estate agents stuff? We have no idea. Um, and also, uh, property types uh, are hugely uh, problematic at the moment. If you are on uh, an ex-local authority flat, for example, um, that are you know more than five stories, problematic. Um, if it's above commercials, 
problematic. Um, all the lenders though, that are out there, they're being a little bit more conservative at the, at the moment. So yeah, we, we get a lot, and I get a lot of inquiries around that, and we try to help a lot of clients on that. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Bit of a rant, bit of a weird, um, what is it today? Today is a Thursday. Um, so a bit of a weird Thursday video. Uh, but I hope you found it useful. At least you, you, you'll you understand what we go through. And, and I'm, that's what I'm trying to do, really. And try to educate yourself. So when you're speaking to a broker, whether it's us or whether it's somebody else out there, you know, the most important thing is try to be organized, get your stuff through together, um, try to be responsive, and then we can help you in return. You know, and, and that's what we, we want to do. Uh, we're, we've set up our business model uh, to only get paid when you are successful again guys check out our niche advice website for uh, all information everything to do with our services and thank you so much please do subscribe it really does help us and comment let me know what you've been told let me know what your experience has been with the brokers um yeah, I've, i i you know in these suck uncertain times um it's certainly becoming more and more frustrating for the clients for us for lenders for solicitors because of delays and more documentation requests, underwriting is a lot more difficult now than five months ago. Getting a mortgage is a lot more difficult than five months ago. Um, and that's why you need professional advice. Take care, all the best. Thank you. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.